we talked about finding minimum sample size required. And I said, everything is this, right? These three formulas. So it's a matter of uh, determining which formula you are using. To, to find the critical value for all of them is very similar. They're all Z scores. There's no T value, T critical value for these particular formulas to determine sample sizes. Um, and you, again, you just have to determine which situation you have. So yesterday we did this one, right? You want to obtain a sample to estimate a population proportion. You want to obtain a sample. You want to determine a minimum sample size. So you got to figure out which one of these you're going to do. And then you're estimating a population proportion so you know it's either one or two. Do you know something about, you know, P hat? Do you know something about a proportion or not? Well, in the one that we did, it said, you have no, at this point in time, you have no reasonable preliminary estimation for the population proportion. You have no knowledge of any type of population proportion. You have no knowledge, P hat and Q hat are unknown in other words. This one that I'm looking at, well, I'll do two of them, but this one that I'm looking at here, check this out. A, poli a political candidate, and uh, Jennifer, this is similar to what you asked me, okay? A political candidate has asked you to conduct a poll to determine what percentage of people support him, okay? You want to obtain a sample to estimate a proportion, right? So what size of sample is needed? They're asking me for minimum sample size. Anytime you're like, what size of sample? You want to obtain a sample. You want to figure out a minimum sample size required. Figure out which one of these you're doing. Is that the sample size chart in your text? I have to look. I don't, I don't think so. You might be looking at, you have to show me which one you're talking about in particular, Lisa, okay? Because there's different charts that deal with sample size. So just maybe. The one, I, the one that you're showing right now is, because I can't, when I try to take a picture of it, it's too blurry and I can't see it clearly. This one here? Yes. Oh, I can rewrite the formula if you want. I'll rewrite them. This, you're saying it's too blurry when you take a picture? Yeah, it's just too small. Okay. Um, Unless you can enlarge it a bit. I was gonna say. I it, think you said in the notes. Yeah, I'll send the, I, I'm, I send the notes in a PDF as well. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And then I'll, I rewrite it too. So if you notice yesterday, I rewrote it somewhere. Maybe I didn't, because <laughs> you guys said, I'll rewrite it in this one. <laughs> All right, so um, a political candidate has asked you to, to, determine, uh, to conduct a poll to determine what percentage of people support him. All right, what percentage of people support him? We want a minimum sample size. I want to figure out N. Okay, which formula do I use? Let's see. If the candidate only wants a 5% margin of error, I'm going to come back to that, and a 99% confidence level, I'll come back to that, and Based on previous evidence, you believe the population proportion is approximately 20%. You know something about P and Q in that case. They give you a population, but they give you an estimation for a previous proportion. So in other words, you're doing a sample size for a proportion and P hat, and I'll tell you what Q hat is in a second. P hat is known. I'm using this one, the second one. So that's my green. I'm using the second formula. So I'm going to say formula two, which here, um, I'm going to screenshot it and then I'll copy it down to you in case. So I'm using this one. P hat, if you hat, I know. Which, you know, it's a little blurry, but I'm going to shrink it down and I'll copy it again if I need to, okay? So this is the formula I'm using based on what I'm reading here. They want a minimum sample size. They um, they want it for a proportion. And we know something about a previous population proportion. So we know something about our P hat and our Q hat. OK. Hold on a second. I'll get to you, Jennifer. Um, so what I need are all these values now. I have to hunt for them within my problem, okay? Well, Z of alpha over two is our critical value. We can figure that out. 
let's talk about p hat, e, and then q hat. Okay. If the candidate only wants a 5% margin of error, so this one is directly giving me e, a 5% margin of error. Jennifer, you said that the one that you were talking about says, I want to be within 10% of the correct answer. That's another way of saying, here's your margin of error. That, that's not it either. The one I got wrong gives you a proportion of 0 0.27, a confidence interval of 90%, and an error bound of 4%. That's all it gives you. And it wants the minimum sample. It gives the answer as 334, and I'm getting 333.3 something. Like it doesn't round up correctly. Uh, always round up to the next whole number when you're doing minimum sample size. Always. Even if it doesn't round up, always round up. So this one we did yesterday was 1503.11, uh, and we still rounded up to 1504. Technically, if you're, if you're determining a minimum value that is needed, you need that 0 0.11 mathematically. So if I go down to 1503, I'm missing that 0 0.11 that I need as my minimum required to do other approximations. So we round up so that we have more instead of less. And obviously we can't have decimals because we can't have a fraction of a person or anything like that. So with your sample size, um, your minimum sample size that you're looking for, you always need a margin of error and there's two ways they can say it. They can directly give it to you like this one, a 5% margin of error, or they can indirectly give it to you like yesterday. Your estimate is within 3% of the true population proportion. If they say that within this percent, that's another way of saying margin of error. So those are the two ways that they can give you margin of error, which is E for your sample size calculation. This particular problem directly says a 5% margin of error. And we're not going to put five in, we got to put it in decimal form, right? We never use percentage within a formula unless the formula requires the actual percentage. Um, so the one that we're doing here actually gives us, and not all of them do, this one gives us a proportion for a population before whatever, approximating it to be 20%. This is, you know, giving me this 0.2 cat within this formula. And Q is always the complement of that. If you recall from binomial stuff, we kind of did, you know, P and Q. I don't know if you guys listened to my stuff, but I said back then, even though you guys are not using Q, when you're using your calculator trick, binomial PDF and all that, even though you're not using Q, know how to find it because you're going to need it later. Here we go. Here's a way, is a place that we needed to know how to find it. Um, so they gave me my margin of error. They gave me this. If they didn't tell me um, this part, based on previous evidence, you believe the population proportion is approximately blah, then you would be using the other formula, this one, where I don't know p hat, just like we did yesterday. At this point in time, you have no reasonable preliminary estimation for the population proportion. That one indicated that I would use the first formula instead of the second, whereas this one gave me something about a population proportion approximating and therefore that means I'm using the second formula to approximate the minimum sample size. The rest of this, you know, uh, critical value is found the same way as we would find any critical value. I start with the confidence level, which in this case is 99%, 0.99. Alpha is always the complement of that, right? This process is repetitive. I take that and divide it by two because you know, if I'm really drawing this, your confidence interval, you have, you know, uh, what is this? 99% in between, so that 1% gets split into the two different tails. We find the um, critical value in the right tail, the positive one, which has that area of 0 0.005, right? 0 0.01 divided by 2, 0 0.005. And then anytime you're finding a critical value, and for these, if it's a z-score, it's inverse norm. Then we go, all right, well, 
inverse norm, second bars. The question is, do you have this option here or not? <laughs> do you have the option whether you can tell the calculator the location of the area? If you do have this option, I'm going to tell it the area is in the right tail. The area in the right tail is 0 0.005. And I'm on a standard normal distribution curve because I'm talking about z-scores. So 0, 1, 4, the mean and standard deviation, 2.57. And then it says, when finding the z-value round to four decimals, so z of alpha over 2 is approximately 2.5758. But if you guys don't have that option, right, we're using this guy, Calc 84, when I go second bars, inverse norm, you know, I don't have the option to tell it where the area is. If my area is in the right tail, this is when I do the 1 minus, 0 0.005. And then 0 and 1. If you don't put the 0 and 1, it's automatically going to assume standard normal distribution, 2.575. So it just depends on what you guys have. So inverse norm, if you don't have the option of telling it where the area is, then you have to tell it the area to the left of the value that you want. And because you know the area to the right, this is where you do that one minus. You could stay consistent with that every time. And then we'll plug and chug. Plug and chug. 2.5758 squared times P, where'd I put that? 0 0.2 times Q, 0.8, divided by E, 0 0.05, the quantity squared. Let me be careful how I put that into my calculator because I wanted to basically do it in a proper order. So I'm gonna do it 2.5758 squared. And then I'm gonna take that, multiply it by 2.2 and 0.8, and practice this process, and then divide it by the quantity 0 0.05 squared. And I got, here we go, well, 424.62. Now this one rounds to, um, it actually rounds to 425, but even if it didn't, we would still go up to the next whole number, 425, always. I'm gonna write that again, always round up to the next whole number, even if it doesn't naturally round to that, right? Always round up. So let me stop the recording. I'll probably do the other minimum.